On July 13, 1920, the Herald actually stated that what had happened in Duluth was a blot on the city that would remain there forever. Lynchings weren't about justice or even revenge, they were about fear and control. Racial terror violence doesn't exist to harm just one victim, it exists to scare entire populations into submission. People react to learning about the lynchings in Duluth with surprise. Up to 10,000 people witnessed this event, making it possibly the largest gathering ever for a lynching in the United States. My great-grandfather was Louis Dondino. Now, Louis was convicted of inciting the riot that led to the lynchings of Elma Jackson, Isaac McGee, and Elias Clayton in 1920. This event was like a wound that was covered up and that no one wanted to talk about. And we know when a wound is covered up, it doesn't necessarily heal. I think there was deep shame that ran through Duluth and also ran through the state of Minnesota. I just learned about this history very recently. Despite being educated uh, in the state and having three degrees, um, an undergraduate degree, a master's degree, and a doctorate degree from the University of Minnesota, uh, and didn't learn about the Duluth lynchings in any one of those uh, formal education settings. And I think that in many ways speaks to part of the challenge that we have within our state, which is uh, the desire to maintain the Minnesota nice mantra. It's the um, notion that if we simply don't talk about things, they don't exist. Why does this history matter today? Well, they say history doesn't repeat itself, but it certainly rhymes. The city of Minneapolis is reeling from the murder of George Floyd at the hands of the Minneapolis Police Department. I see at least one pattern here, and that is the role of the accuser. In 1920, Irene Tuscan's accusations led to the murders of Clayton, Jackson, and McGee. In 1955, Carolyn Bryant's accusations led to the murder of Emmett Till in Mississippi. And in 2020, Amy Cooper's accusations jeopardized the life of Christian Cooper in Central Park. I currently live in Duluth, Minnesota. The reality of living in Duluth as a person of color and specifically a black person presents countless barriers. Dealing with police, a system based in social control, especially the control of black and brown peoples is just one obstacle. Caucasians openly disparage the historical and social trauma blacks have experienced and continue to experience every day. The inability and unwillingness of white Americans to empathize is the tragic flaw in our collective character. We often experience a communal effort to gaslight black people in order to have us question our own sanity. Uh, folks will question the validity of our stories deny that the issues relate to racism or suggest that we're overreacting to generations of dehumanization. Recently, racists and white nationalists no longer fear retributions for hostile rants and social media postings which national leadership either ignores or tacitly approves. White supremacy isn't just the overt violent actions, it's the systems, behaviors, and values that allow people to engage in those overt acts. White supremacy is here and now, and anyone who has even a passing knowledge of our history can see that quite clearly. I believe we can do better, and I know that we have to do better. Um, we see things happening around us all the time today that show us we have not come very far from 1920. 
Minnesota grapples with that same history of extrajudicial killing of black men that the rest of the country does. So it's our responsibility to learn from this history and commit to shaping the realities that people will reflect on a hundred years from now. We must never again look past the criminally inhumane abuse of our people. We will never thrive as a society without seeking to understand others and build a sense of empathy for all. As a city and as a state, we're finding ourselves asking the same question that people asked themselves in Duluth in 1920. And, it, and that question is, are we going to do the right thing? And our healing will only come from the full, complex truth of our history.